Whether you like it or not, you gotta pay your dues, right? Particularly property taxes. If you own a house, if you own property, you're gonna have to pay your taxes, it's due. Now let's talk about due, when is it due? Well, ready, here it comes. Property taxes, they are due, ready? I want you to know this for your exam, and I want you to know this in general for your real estate career. Property taxes are due November 1st. The second installment is due February 1st. Now, how are we gonna remember this? Ready? I want you to think of N-D-F-A. N-D-F-A. That stands for no darn fooling around. And that's what the government tells you. No darn fooling around. N, they're due November 1st. D, darn, they're late after December 10th. F, February 1st, second installment due. And A, April 10th, they're delinquent after that date. Uncle Sam says, hey, no darn fooling around when it comes to your property taxes, pay up. So they're due November, late in December, due again in February, late in April. Think about that. Uncle Sam reminding you, no darn fooling around, so pay those property taxes. Now, you got a buyer. Just close that scroll, they're excited as hell. They're gonna throw a party and they invite you, the realtor, after all, you did help them out. And they do, they decorate the house, and it's exciting. They got music pumping, they got beverages galore. It's just an incredible time. It's an incredible, the energy is so high. You're out there on the dance floor and people are coming in through that front door, knocking, and they're coming in, knocking, and they're coming in. And then you have this one guest who bangs on the door. And who is it? Uncle Sam. And Uncle Sam shows up and Uncle Sam says, hey, Mr. Homeowner, Mrs. Homeowner, again, reminder, you gotta pay your property taxes. I know you're having all this fun. You're having all this fun. You decorated it beautifully. In fact, you know what? You got the best house on the block. It looks great outside. It looks great inside. But don't forget your property taxes. So now that you know they're due November and February, remember, no darn fooling around, I wanna explain something to you. I want you to understand how we determine the property taxes on houses. It's based on ad valorem. Ad valorem, which means according to value. And that's how Uncle Sam expects you to pay your property taxes, according to the value of the property you just purchased. Now let's assume you'll purchase this property. Let's assume your buyer just purchased this property for a million bucks. What's the rate on the property taxes? Now, typically, it's anywhere between 0.6% all the way up to one full percent here in the state of California. Now, let me remind you of something. Here in the state of California, there are 58 counties 58 counties, and each county is going to expect you to pay your property tax if you own property. But they can't charge you more than 1% total for county property tax. Got it? County property taxes? No more than 1%. So when your buyer says, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Realtor, what do you think I'll be paying for property taxes? I want you to tell them anywhere from 1% all the way up to one and a quarter percent. Now why am I taking it all the way up to one and a quarter percent? 1.25%, ready? Because aside from the county property taxes, there are other local taxes on that property, municipal taxes. So play it safe and tell them it could be anywhere from 1% all the way up to 1.25% of that purchase price, of that assessed value, of that assessed value on the day you close that deal. You close the deal for $1 million, we're going to presume it's assessed at $1 million. So what are property taxes on $1 million? Let's do the math. $1 million times 1% is what? Yeah, $10,000. So that new homeowner will have to pay $10,000 for that one year. Now what happens if property taxes increase? Whoa, now we have a problem. Or do we? You see, many people purchased their properties many, many moons ago. Many moons ago when properties were a lot cheaper than they are today. Let's go back in time, huh? Let's go back in time. Let's go, I don't know, back to 1970. Somebody purchased their house back in 1970, right here by the ocean, for $20,000. It's a realistic a thought, which means property taxes were very low. At 1%, they were only $200 annually, $200 a year for property taxes in 1970. Now let's assume that same property tax today. That same house is now assessed probably, I don't know, four or $5 million? Let's go high, let's go $5 million. So this particular homeowner who purchased a property back in 1970, and this property taxes were only $200 a year, we would assume then, if it's based on ad valorem, according to value, that today he will be paying $50,000, that same 1%. Now let's assume that that same person who bought this property back in 1970 had a great career and they were making great income. They were much younger. They were able to afford that $200 a year. But as the property values increased, so did the taxes, right? Eventually, as somebody's career is going on and life is happening, their income is fixed. They're on a fixed income. So as the property values are increasing, typically their income is decreasing. Wow. We get increased value in properties, which means increased taxes, and we have somebody's 
income dropping. How is our retired population going to be able to pay their property taxes if it's based on value? They can't. It'd be impossible. We'll have people who are retired losing their homes. Why? Because they can't afford to pay the taxes. Ah, good news. We thought it out clearly. Tax voters thought about this back in 1978. Proposition 13, wow. Proposition 13 allows for the retirement population to stay in their home. Why? Let me explain. Proposition 13 said, well, you cannot increase people's property taxes more than 2% of what they're already paying. So listen to this. Somebody who was paying $200 a year, you can only increase it the following year by 2%. And let's do the math, it's nice and simple. What's 2% of $200? Yeah, $4. So this homeowner, property tax is increased by $4. And the following year, let's assume that the property went up 20% of value. Again, the max you can increase somebody's taxes per Proposition 13 is 2%. So you can only increase those property taxes by another 2%. Increments of 2%. So as, as properties were skyrocketing over the years, from 1970, 1980, 1990 to today, that nice homeowner who purchased their property long ago, years ago, has the advantage of that Proposition 13. That it doesn't matter if properties increase in value by 50%, and it has happened, you can only increase the property taxes by 2%. All makes sense. So, property taxes, can they be boring? Sure, it can be boring. It's numbers, who likes numbers? I don't know, I, I, I get chummy with them, but I don't wanna fall in love with them. Now, when you have a discussion with your client regarding property taxes, you know what to say. Hope this helps you out, huh? Hey, listen, do me a favor, quick favor. Please like the video if this was helpful for you. In the meantime, go out and have a great day, and we shall see you next week.